In this video, we're going to find the domain of the function f of x equals the square root of x squared minus 5x minus 14. Now, because our function f, uh, it's a square root of, I mean, actually, there's two functions in play right here. So we have our outer function, which is the square root of some function, some that number, let's call it u. We're composing this with the quadratic polynomial x squared minus 5x minus 14. We've put a quadratic function inside of a square root. Now, a quadratic has no restriction on its domain. You can take any real numbers. But the square root does have some issues, right? We can only take square roots of non-negative numbers. So in order to compute the domain of this function, we essentially just have to look at the radicand of our square root, and that thing needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's the inequality we now have to solve right now. x squared minus 5x minus 14 is greater than or equal to zero. Zero is okay, because the square root of zero is zero here. And so in trying to solve that, we solve this quadratic inequality like we would any other quadratic inequality. We could factor, we could complete the square, we could use the quadratic formula. This one factors easy enough. Factors of negative 14 that add to be negative five. You take x minus seven and x plus two. This is greater or equal to zero. And so therefore our markers are gonna be seven and negative two. I can place these markers on the x-axis. So I have like a negative two right here and I have a positive seven right here. If I wanna be greater than or equal to zero, that means I'm looking for those places which are above or on the x-axis. And what part of a parabola is gonna be above the x-axis? Because the leading coefficient here is a positive one, this means the graph would be concave upward. So if you just kind of think of your usual parabola, it's gonna be concave upward, it's gonna go up something like this. So you have your negative two over here, your seven right here. The things that are above the x-axis is gonna be the wings of our bird, the left wing and the right wing. So we're looking at these portions right here. And so that then tells us that the domain of our function would be negative infinity to negative two. Two is included in that uh, because if I plug in x equals two, I'm gonna get the square root of zero, which is zero. And then there's a big gap where there's nothing. The function is not defined for this region because we're taking the square root of negative numbers, which are not real numbers. And then you're gonna union, once you get past that, that desert in the domain, you'll then pick up where you left off, seven to infinity, where seven will be included inside of the domain. The markers are included because the square root of zero is included. Now, I do wanna mention that if you kind of, if you change this problem up, let's say that g of x equals one over the square root of x squared minus 5x minus 14. Everything would basically be the same, but you have to solve the inequality x squared minus 5x minus 14 is greater than zero. We no longer would allow equal to zero because if you took, if you actually got equal to zero, you take the square root of zero, which is zero, and that's fine, but then you divide it by zero, so it's undefined. So in that situation, the domain of g would be negative infinity to negative two union seven to infinity, but this time the, the endpoints negative two and seven would not be included.